Hey everybody, welcome back to our Digital Edge Night. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope everybody's having a happy Easter and a good week. And let's just go ahead and start with prayer. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for this time that's set apart, this time to, to grow closer together as a family, as a body of Christ, and to dive into your word and to learn more about you and your Son through the Old Testament figure, Moses. We, we ask for the grace to open our hearts, to respond to your love, um, to respond to this love, which we hope to hear about today in our daily lives every day. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come into this moment and to, to guide our, our thoughts and our minds and to open our hearts to what you have to teach us tonight. And as always, let everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we are only but give glory to your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. So last week we talked about Moses, and we talked about the exodus of Israel. And this week we're going to talk about Moses again because he is such an important figure in the Old Testament, and he's such an important figure to the Jews and to really Christians as well. We're going to spend another week on him. Um, and so last week we saw how Moses reflected Jesus and the way he liberated his people from Egypt. And Moses also reflects Jesus in what we're going to be talking about today, which is the second great thing that Moses did, which is the giving of the law. And this is what the second half of the book of Exodus is all about. The second half of the book of Exodus relates the journey of the Israelites after they exit the Red Sea, and they're wandering in the desert. Um, and they wander in the desert for three months, which are in chapters 16 17 and 18, they're wandering through the desert, and then they get to a very important place. It's the wilderness of Sinai, and this happens in chapter 19. And it's here where they camp, and it's here where a very famous story happens. Um, we're going to read from Exodus chapter 24. It says, Chapter 24, verse 12, the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain, and while you are there, I will give you the stone tablets on which I have written the commandments intended for their instruction. Right. So this is, again, the giving of the law, the giving of the Ten Commandments on these two tablets that Moses brings down to the Israelites. And so he goes up onto the mountain. He spends 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of God, uh, fasting. And then he comes down and he gives the Israelites what is known as the Torah. Um, and these are the first five books of the Bible, which traditionally um, in Jewish and especially ancient Jewish belief were written by Moses himself. And this includes the Ten Commandments, this, this law. Jesus, too, kind of reflects this story in his life, especially, especially in the Gospel of Matthew, which the Gospel of Matthew is written to a Jewish audience. So we would see, we would see why it would make sense to kind of reflect Moses in, in the in this gospel, and he does so very heavily, especially in the parts we're going to be looking at today. But Jesus too, in chapter three, he is baptized in the River Jordan, right? Which we talked about the Red Sea being this image of baptism, right? So Jesus has his baptism, and then he goes directly into the desert. He goes directly into the wilderness to be tempted by Jesus or to be tempted by Satan. That is, and so again we see him following this um, this journey of the Israelites too. He he himself travels through his Red Sea. He enters into his his desert, and then pretty much right after he exits the desert, he gives us what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Right, and this is in Matthew chapter five. Um, we'll read verse one. When he saw the when he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began he began to teach them. Right? And so Jesus, too, goes up this mountain, and he gives his own teaching. He gives his own moral code, you could say. He talks about the law. He talks about commandments. He talks about the things you should do to live rightly and close to God. And here, more than anywhere, I feel like we see Matthew showing Jesus as the new Moses. And ancient Jews, um, in the time of Christianity, or early Christianity, listening to this gospel definitely would have noticed this because of one very, very important prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy. And we'll flip to the book of Deuteronomy. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, chapter 18, verse 18. Um, 
says, this is Moses speaking to all the Israelites. I will raise up for them a prophet, or this is, sorry, God speaking to Moses. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kindred and will put my words into the mouth of the prophet and the prophet shall tell them all that I commanded. Right, and this prophecy grew into this great anticipation for this prophet. So every time there's a prophet around, you can kind of see the Israelites saying, is this him? Is this him? Is this a prophet that Moses was talking about? Is this a prophet like Moses? They did it with John the Baptist. And here, here Matthew is inviting him to ask that question about Jesus. And what is Matthew saying in response to that question? He's saying, yes, this is the prophet like Moses. This is the one to come. This is the one that God is, is speaking directly from um, because he is God. And if we're going to look at how Moses is a reflection of Jesus and how Jesus is a fulfillment of Moses, then we really need to look at what they both teach on their mountains. Right? And so what does Moses teach uh, really f after coming down from the mountain? He gives, he gives the Israelites what is known as the Torah. right? And as we said, those are the first. The, this law is what fills the next really three ver books of the Bible. The next three books of the Bible are about Israel's wandering through the desert and also a lot of reciting of these laws that God has given Moses for the people. And there are traditionally around 613 of them. There's a, a lot, everything from how you, how you should eat, what you should eat, to how you should dress, to how you should wash your hands before worship and meals. Um, but the most popular and the most emphasized by really Moses himself are known as the Ten Commandments. And we know these, we grew up, we grew up learning them in religious education. We might have them on like a Pinteresty looking sign in our house somewhere. Um, and these are first giving, given in Exodus chapter 20. And there's a number of, uh, there's a number of them given, but just to, to name a couple, you know, I'm the Lord, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make yourselves an idol or a likeness of anything. Um, you shall not invoke the name of your Lord God in vain. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his goods. Um, and those are just, yeah, the, the, these are the Ten Commandments, which, which we know all too well. And to really kind of compare and contrast them here, we're going to look at what Jesus gives in his Sermon on the Mount. Right? And he seems to give his own kind of list of commandments, really. Um, and these are known as the Beatitudes. And you might have heard of them as well. They're also, uh, hopefully, hopefully they were also taught in your religious ed class. But they're usually a little, a little less known than the commandments, for sure. And these are found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3, 3 through 10. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the, they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are they. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And these are, these are very important, and we're going to be diving into a little bit of these. But, um, but first, let's just kind of point out some of the differences that we see between these two lists, uh, these two teachings, really. The first one, I think, and the most obvious, is the commandments are given in negatives, right? Thou shall not. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not covet. Even the, even the positive ones, which we typically have written as positives, for instance, keep the Sabbath day holy, um, are, are given in negative somewhere. So for an exodus, like thou, thou shall not work on the Sabbath, right? On the contrary, the Beatitudes are given in a positive, right? They're a list of statements and then blessings. So blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not, it's not saying thou shalt not do something. It's kind of a goal. Thou shalt, thou should be blessed. Um, and thou, thou should be poor in, poor in spirit because then you will be blessed. And then the kingdom of God of the kingdom of heaven is yours. The second difference that I think 
is in these two is who who is giving them. In the first one, Moses is speaking as a prophet. God gives the laws to Moses, and then Moses give, gives the law to his people, right? So you have this kind of interpreter of Moses, and Moses never speaks with authority, right? All the authority is from God, who he speaks for. Jesus, on the other hand, speaks with authority. Jesus, on the other hand, is giving these from him. And why can he give these from him? Because he is God. And we see this we see this in the first the first verses of the book of Hebrews. So we're going to turn that real fast. And um, this is pointed out. It says, In times past, God spoke in partial in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he spoke to us through a son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe. Right? And so what does this mean in my life in following these in these rules because I don't follow all the 613 rules of the Torah, but we are told to follow the Ten Commandments. Um, does this mean I can ditch the Ten Commandments and just kind of uh, work in these beatitudes? And I would say absolutely not. And Jesus says the same thing. If we move a little bit ahead from the beatitudes in Matthew chapter five verse seventeen. What does Jesus say? He says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill, right? And so Jesus is not, not here presenting a new law. He's not presenting new rules. He is fulfilling the old law. He's fulfilling the law on the tablets given to Moses. And how is he fulfilling those? Um, we, we will see by the way he lives his life. And I think it's an interesting point to look at who in Jesus's time is following the law um, or, or they think they're following the law to the fullest extent. They know the law like the back of their hand. They don't break it. They go through great extremes not to break any part of it, and they take it very seriously. These are the religious leaders, the religious group known as the Pharisees, right? We hear a lot about the Pharisees, not really positive things about the Pharisees in the Gospels, but the Pharisees their big thing was following the law to the T, was all of these 613 laws was following ritualistically to the T, and that everybody had to follow these. And what does Jesus say about the Pharisees a couple verses later in Matthew 5, verse 20? He says, I tell, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, in Matthew chapter 23, Verse 27, in, in the middle of this long discourse, all kind of um, calling out the bad things that the, the Pharisees are doing. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead man's bones and every kind of filth. Right? And so what, what did the Pharisees miss? What did these people miss who are following the law to, to a T? What, what are they missing in... In their, in their lives. And I think Jesus gives this because he's, he's re-describing the law in a new way that, that they don't understand. And we see this, um, what does it look like to fulfill the law? We can flip to Romans. We're in Romans chapter 13, or yes, Romans chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. Right. So here we see that love encompasses the entirety of the law. Um, the law is boiled down to that one statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And how is this? Is because the law was made for love. And the law was made out of love. And what does this mean? Is that the Ten Commandments were given out of love to keep us from things that would ultimately harm us, even if we don't see it. Um, God gave these to us because he loves us and because he wants to keep us from those things that would harm us and make us unhappy. And just as they are given out of love, they should be followed out of love and not out of a fear of punishment. Um, and they should be viewed in this sense, in this, this really this vision of love. 
right? The commandments that, that Jesus gives are not rungs on a ladder that we simply climb and check off the list and get ourselves to heaven. No, they're the fruit of the life of someone who is close to God, right? So they're the things that somebody does who loves Jesus, who loves God. Jesus here is not showing us a morality um, that is about the things that he wants us to do. He shows us a morality that is about the things he wants for, for us, really. And last week, when diving into the Exodus, we saw Jesus was a new Moses because he liberated his people, but not just because he liberated his people. He was a new Moses because he was a fulfillment of Moses because he liberated his people once and for all on Calvary. And this week, we see that Jesus is the new Moses, new Moses because he fulfills Moses in the way he gives the law. Um, not because he gives another law or a new law that that gets rid of the old one, but because he fulfills the law with his life um, and with the love that he shows us on the cross. And he gives us this positive view of the law in the Beatitudes. And he gives us the Beatitudes in this, this lens of love. And the Beatitudes are not minimums in this, in this vision. The Beatitudes are not just things we should avoid. They're not just negatives. Although we, there are things we should avoid, and the commandments are still real and applicable. Um, the Beatitudes are a goal. They're, uh, they're a roof. They're not a minimum. They're a maximum. And they're the goal of the Christian life. And they're the things that we, we strive for to be like the one who gave them. They're the ones we strive for to be like Jesus. So again, throughout this week, I challenge you to look at those, those laws in your life that are given out of love. Sometimes they're from your parents. Sometimes they're from the state. Lots of times they're, they're from the church. And to view them in that lens of love. Um, so, for instance, why, why should we go to Mass on Sunday? It's not just a rule. It's given out of love because that is what's going to bring the best joy and happiness out of you. And the more we learn to trust God and the more we learn to lean on Him, the more we will see His his commandments and the Beatitudes and the Ten Commandments in this lens of love.